Hi guys, welcome back to Butte Mountain Homestead. Um, I was going through videos and I realized that the beginning of this video, I did not do a greeting or what I was going to talk about. I just kind of jumped right into tomatoes. <laughs> and then I figured out that I cannot try to do separate video content unless I remember to make a folder for it. So anyways, I'm going to try to not make this hodgepodge. Um, I think this one's going to be all about tomatoes. So I will go ahead and start on that and then we'll come back and finish. So stay tuned and <laughs> thanks for hanging out and sticking through while I figure this out. Someday when I've got it all figured out, you'll be like, you know, I remember way back when, when you had crappy videos. Well, I don't think they're crappy, but they're, they're very, very, um, rough. Let's just put it that way. But hopefully they're entertaining, inspiring, and you learn something. And that was the whole goal. So anyways, let's get into today's video. Hi guys, real quick. Um, I'm going to, as I said in the last video, I was going to plant I think I said in the last video, <laughs> I've done Instagram stories and Snapchat stories and I forget what I posted where, but I'm going to plant the sun gold tomato here just because I have room for it. I did bring some soil amendment just because the onions are such heavy feeders and I'm going to put the um, sweet, oh gosh, what is it? Ugh. Super sweet. That's what I tried growing and they just didn't grow. I don't know if I got bad seed or not because they didn't grow last year either. And I'm going to put that one there. And then when I'm done with that, I'm going to, I think, on this trellis on the inside, like right down here. And over on this side is I'm going to plant some beans. I have some pinto bean seeds and some black bean seeds. They're from Baker Creek Seeds, I believe. So I will show you that. Um, it'll be my first year growing them, so I'm excited about that. And I think I'm going to lessen the amount of tomatoes. <laughs> I don't want to, but I think bed-wise, um, because I have some Swiss chard... And I have more peppers than what's going to fit back there. So I think I'm going to put the Swiss chard and the bell peppers in this one with some of the beans. Or I'm going to put the peppers here because peppers and tomatoes can grow together. So I might just put the beans up to grow this way. But I want them to grow up and over because these are cattle panels. This has been up there forever. It's kind of a joke now. <laughs> uh, but uh, yeah, the onions have... A little ways to go so I will not be doing this next year unless I know for sure that that is ready to go so that will be what we're doing I'm also doing some weeds today the rye grass has gotten in here so I'm gonna weed this bed real quick and I'm gonna harvest some of those young asparagus and let some of these bigger ones go because the bed doesn't want to be fully harvested so I'm gonna let it keep the big ones and then I'm going to harvest some of the little ones. I think eventually this bed is going to get moved out there. And I've talked about that before. Is I think I'm going to put. Um, see if I can show it very well. But I'm going to kind of zoom in here. There we go. So this first section right here is going to be um, like a little road. Oops. And. Uh, and then all of this will be planting. So I need to raise that corner up. But I think all of that, so that's one, two, three, four. That's 32 feet. I think I'm going to put asparagus on that um, with a bed. And then it'll be terraced a little bit on the other side. So I think that's what I'm going to do. But I can't start on this until the fall because of the spray. So anyways, that so what I'm going to be using, um, there's a dripper right there. Oh, and tomatoes and onions can be companion planted. They're actually good for each other for pest control. So I might actually put a few more <laughs> tomatoes in where I have drippers. So I might just do that today because I have some that are hardened off. But I'm going to use this uh, Tomato Tone by Espoma. It contains Biotone fertilizer. Uh, no, I'm not sponsored. I buy this 
I love this stuff. Only, only because, well not only, but because it's a, I know it works. And I really love all of their products. And then it's organic. Uh, the only problem with planting, thinking I'm planting organic is that dirt crud that I got last year. I don't think, well, I, it was horrible. Nothing grew. Hardly anything grew. So, um, and because I amended this bed is why the onions are doing so good. Yeah, see, they're starting to bulb up. They're doing awesome. So I'm just going ahead and put that little tomato right there and maybe get a few more because I have a few more to first. But I wanted to show that I'm using this. And this is that Kellogg Native Smart uh, soil that I'm going to use to amend it with. I didn't have any onions there, so technically I don't have to, but I may as well. Okay, I went ahead and put that little guy in. I do plant him really deep. Only because then I'll show you here. I'm sure you've already seen it, but I'll show you too. See all those little tiny hairs on there that are glistening? Those are gonna those are roots. So if the deeper you plant it, the more root system is going to be established. So I'm going to actually plant this one up to, let's see. I'm going to take that one off and probably this one off and I'm going to plant it up to about right here so all of that will be in the ground and I'm going to take off well I just don't want any leaves touching the ground so it'll probably be about right here because see that leaf just wants to touch that's where disease starts to happen is moisture gets on the leaves so and these right there those are the suckers Let's see if I can show them those are the suckers those you don't want on there either you can actually use those to plant new plants, which I think I showed last year. But anyways, so I'm going to get this one in. I'm going to do the hole and then I'll show you what I mean about planting. Hold on. Okay, I'm going to try to do this one handed, but I already took off that bottom one here. And I'm just going to pinch this one off here. I'll see if I can turn around and do it better. Yeah, I'm just going to pinch it off right there. Oh, and the quail, they're talking. <laughs> they're trying to tell the mamas where there's a good spot. Oh, and then look at the, there's a worm. Nice. So I'm going to go ahead and put a sprinkle. Okay, I'm not sure why it keeps cutting me off. Oh, there, I got it. So I put a sprinkle of tomato tone in there. Now I'm going to very carefully loosen this. See that purple on the leaves? They're lacking stuff, so they're ready to get out of these pots, too. Ooh, it's not going to let me do it. Hold on. Okay, look at that wonderful root system. And that was up potted, what, a month ago? Not even a month ago. Look at that glorious root system. Doing something right, and that's from seed. This, I believe, I think I grabbed an Abe Lincoln. Yeah, I think I grabbed an Abe Lincoln. So now, see if I can get the phone in here without dropping it. See, it's not deep enough. So I'm going to go ahead and dig it down a little bit deeper. Because it's actually ground level and I want it up a little bit. So I'm going to dig it a little bit deeper. And I'm doing it by hand. So, hold on. Alright, now the holes. Now I need to put some more stuff in there. So, a little handful. Now... Get it down in there. And I'm going to add a handful of amendment. Just, just a, not a ton. Make sure all those wormies get back in there. There you go. Let's see. And then technically, I probably should pull this one off too because it's touching the ground. This one isn't. This one is. So I'm going to go ahead and... seems harsh, but it's okay. There we go. There we go. Get down a little bit. There we go. And I'll get that watered in. And then I'll have two tomato plants. 
a head start, which will give me some tomatoes before everybody else gets in. So I'm excited about that. So now I'm just going to pull weeds and just pull weeds. Then I'll moan a little bit. So I'll catch back at you later. It says on these to plant them. Um, I found her. She was at one of the doors. It says to plant them half inch deep. Um, this is four to five inching, inches apart. That's the pinto bean. The black bean is three to four inches apart. Uh, see, after last frost, which we're definitely there. 50 days on the black bean. Four days to maturity. Pinto bean is 90 days. So, I'm glad I didn't keep them in my pocket much longer. They were getting <laughs> kind of damp. But anyways, let me get those planted. Okay, so I showed the beans and I forgot to show me planting them or if I did, they're in another video somewhere. But anyways, they're all, all along here to where they'll grow up here and hopefully go, hopefully all the way over. Um, I think I did the pinot beans on one side and the black beans on the other. And then, um, I see I noticed some of my white onions, I think... Are they the white ones? Uh, it's whatever's in this bunch. No, these are the yellow onions. These are starting to flower. So I went ahead and I've just been popping off the tops of the flowers. Hopefully they'll keep going. If not, that's going to be kind of a bummer. <laughs> but um, yeah, those uh, tomatoes, they've got new growth. The ones I planted, I think by the time... Uh, what I'm doing right now, these have been in there for a few days. But, um, today, um, I went in and I looked at my, um, my planned garden chart. And when I planted Swiss chard the other day, I only had two left. The mouse had eaten two leaves off of the biggest one and most of the leaves off of this one. I did cover it up because it is so small. Um, but I do see new growth on this one. But these two chard were supposed to be in bed number four down there. And they're not. So, I'm going to, um, I did realize I was planting beefsteak tomatoes in here. So I am, and they can be planted together, actually. Um, I'm going to put four beefsteak in here. They're going to be about a foot apart. And that one I am going to get crowd kind of cheap towards into kind of into the garlic um because by the time the garlic is harvested that will be up and I might actually now that I'm thinking about it is I might go ahead and put all the beef stick steak in here I might plant them in between the garlic because uh, they can be planted together huh, I might do that anyways um I was gonna plant them down here because this is where the chard was supposed to go. This is where bell peppers were supposed to go. And so I kind of messed up on planning. But I was going to put uh, three beef steak to where they grew up this right here. And uh, I am going to do like a little roof system. I'm going to do instead of these because these just kind of collapsed. Is I'm going to take some of the cross beams from that. And I'm going to make almost like a little pitch um and then have a board go all the way down that way stuff can grow up um not right now the red onions are coming along i do think it's going to be a couple more weeks but they are bulbing up and we're supposed to be in the 80s next week so um and then after that is in the high 70s low 80s but i digress um I didn't have as many beefsteak as I thought I was going to have, so that'll be perfect for here. I have Amish paste coming out my ears. So I know one whole bed is going to be heavy, heavy, heavy Amish paste, and I'm just going to have to be really diligent on the pruning, and I'm going to be giving some away. So um, I also found three sun gold cherry tomatoes. I am going to put one in a pot for sure because I want to see how long I can keep them when the greenhouse is done. Cold frame. Uh, how long I can keep it going so I'll be able to move it into there. Um, yeah, so I'm going to go ahead and I brought out the tomato tone. Uh, I think it's over here. 
So hang tight. Oh, real quick. Uh, I had planted green beans and um, I had three left. So I went ahead and just put them in this bed. And I'll show you a second. The potatoes. I forgot I had planted uh, sprouted potatoes that were in the house. I forgot I had put them here. And these are loving their life. And I'm glad I did that. So there's one, two, three, four, five, six potatoes in here because three potatoes did not take. Two right there and one right there. There is one right there, but my cat, I'm going to have words with her. But I got the drip all set up yesterday. I ran it from, so it does this bed and this bed. And it's hooked up to the faucet. So this is the only thing on drip. So it, it runs really good. I was able to get peppers planted yesterday. I had enough to where all the peppers can go in this bed. This is a 3 by 12 with a random volunteer garlic. Uh, there's three peppers that were not marked. Not sure what they are. They're either sweet. I think they're sweet or jalapeno because those were the first ones. And it's this one, this one, and that one. So those are mystery. That was one tiny little bell pepper that the one of the mice had eaten and there's one leaf left. So I'm hoping that survives. And then <laughs> this is a shish, um, what is this? This is a sweet one leaf. And see, there's only two, and I had more than that. So I'm hoping all three of those are sweet peppers, because that's what we make our pepperoncinis out of. And yes, these got hardened off. I did give them, they're kind of all planted together to where if they do kind of crowd each other, at least they're like peppers. And I should be able to, I didn't want to do this, but I should be able to pick peppers from the other side. If not, I'll just get in there and just do it. But I think the jalapenos are on the end, shishitos. Um, what do we got here? Jalapenos, lots of jalapeno, lots of jalapenos because I want to do, um, I want to make a lot of cowboy candy this year. So lots of jalapenos. What are those? Oh, those are bell peppers. Bell peppers, shishitos, jalapenos, uh, sweet peppers, and then mystery. So, and this all feeds in and I turned it on yesterday. So I got the drip ran to the red bud tree yesterday and got it going on these green beans i think i showed before oh and three bean green beans did make it through there's one right there and one right here and one right here um so the mice didn't eat them all um gotta take these oh that one's not gonna make it anywho Oh, and there's one more right there, too. So, my didn't need them all, so I should have plenty of green beans, hopefully. Zan one didn't make it back there, but I'm going to transplant that little guy over there. Anyways, I've just got lots going on. That's what time of year it is. But look at the potatoes. I'm going to pick up some raised bed mix this week. That way I can start getting them topped off. I top them off until I get to the top. And that's how much settles every year. Don't know where it goes, but it settles. And like I said, I have the tree on drip, and I got it double, so it should get plenty of water. Um, that's on pause just for right now, because my husband's in the field. It's that time of year, so like I said, I lost him. But, yep, uh, look at the red onions are bulbing up really good. So I'm really excited about those. Anywho, I'm going to get to planting tomatoes. And I think I showed you before what I do. I'm just going to plant them really deep. Um, the quail are trying to nest. And this is going to have to get fortified somehow. It's already starting to want to collapse. You're going to have to figure that out sooner and later. So, anywho, stay tuned, guys. Okay, I went ahead and grabbed those other three beefsteaks. There's one, two, and three. So that'll be seven tomato plants. That should round off the bed pretty good. I'll make sure they're about oh, 18 inches apart. Oh, at least 12 to 18 inches apart. So I'm going to go ahead and get after it. And the nice thing about those three down there is they're going to be shaded. 
so kind of protected for the garlic till June when they're ready. I did pull one yesterday to see how it was developing. It's it's getting there. Um, they're far from ready. They kind of look like they're thinking about being done, but I might need to fertilize them too. So I will go ahead and do that. And there's a few carrots left. I'm just kind of leaving those. Um, anyways, let's go ahead and get after it. Okay, all seven beef steak tomatoes are in. There are some hidden, excuse the shadow. So that was the biggest one. And there's a little guy right there. See, they're tucked in the, the car, like right there. And then right there. So they'll be tied up to this trellis. I've had tomatoes here plenty of times. I didn't have them last year because I had a cover crop in after because tomatoes were in this bed for four years. Um, and then I did a cover crop blend to give it some green goodness. So, and then um, last year, hmm, I don't remember what I had in here, but, oh, I had cucumbers and such. But, so this hasn't had tomatoes, I think, for over a year. So, anyways, and then when they get to here... I hard prune them to where there's no green below. This is about 18 inches. And then I will just hard prune them up all the way. Anyways, I'm going to very carefully get these watered in. And then on to the next project. Okay, they're all watered in. Um, I think because these are planted over there is I have basil ready to go. Well, it's growing. But I think I'll plant this on this side because it'll, these are going to lean more towards that side, and that's, they're going to be tied up here, so I think I'm going to have room for basil, um, and that'll take up this whole side once the garlic's out, but I think I'm going to go ahead and wrap this video up, that way it's kind of, kind of just, uh, geared towards tomatoes and a few other little, quick little tours, so I hope you enjoyed this video, um, remember to subscribe, like, share, all that good stuff, uh, just meant for all of us to have a good time and kind of learn together and see my failures, my successes, what I do. Um, whether you learn from my failures or successes, at least you're learning something so you don't have to do it. But and above all else is, you know, do what works for you in your area. Like I said, I'm in zone nine, Northern California. We get hotter in the Dickens during the summertime. Uh, last year we had couple months of triple digits uh almost a month of over 110 so it's it's pretty darn hot so i get things planted as soon as i can and just enjoy them and deal with stuff as it happens so anyways i hope you guys have a great week and i'll keep putting up videos of stuff because it's busy right now remember to always be kind and do what makes you happy and see you next time